What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very special Japanese episode of Fun Rose Food. And today we got invited to a special dinner at the spot in West Village and we are having the omakase style. So today we are at Shiraku in the West Village with our friend Dr. Jen and Juice and we are gonna check out some elevated izakaya. You got seafood being flown in from Hokkaido and we got some beef from Miyazaki. Let's go. going on Jen you are a optometrist aka eye doctor you're an Instagrammer and a foodie I know you guys always feature cheapest high places true but yes. I want to bring you guys to a different spot that's a little elevated but still is a kaya Jen why don't you lead the way so our first dish is gonna be the kombu cured flute with some sawagani from Hokkaido sawagani are fresh river crabs Oh, it sounds very zen. Then we have a yuan marinated salmon. It's rolled in dry cotton. On the back here, we have a tomato gelé. Jelly's fancy is gelé. That's exactly right. I challenge you two to eat the crab. All right, all right. All right. Thanks. You guys have David to eat Jen. That was really so good. There's, it's actually juicy inside because this is freshly fried. Obviously, if you've had the snacks, they're like dried and fried and they have like no juice in them. All right, this is the kombu cured. Okay, so this is Luke is the type of fish, guys. Wow, okay. that's a nice flavor. I like a firm texture to it. Mm. What do you say this is? Gelé. Gelé. No, that's not this a jelly. This is, wow. That was my first time. not what I expected wow. at all, right? This is salmon. That was just the first course of the tasting menu. Now on to dish number two of the tasting menu. This is a tuna namaro. It's like so a tuna tartar. You have right. some lotus root chips on the front with the seaweed on the back. Toro was so soft, it almost had the same consistency as the avocado. It melted in my mouth. Toro's fatty right. tuna. Yeah. Mm. That is the best usage of avocado in a fusion dish I've ever had. That wasn't Japanese fusion. That was Japanese fission. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of unagi, but I am so interested in trying that. If all unagi was prepared like that, I'm a big unagi fan, man. That was so It doesn't even need any flavor. No, I eel is essentially a delicious snake. A sea snake. I mean, so you didn't really see grill marks on the top, but yeah. on the bottom you tasted it. It was delicious. I was so caught off guard by the amount of grill taste, considering just how white the eel is. The chicken oyster is the primo cut of the chicken. This is where it connects the thigh and the back. This might be the best bite of chicken we ever had. It's really juicy, right? Yo. Had a little bit of crisp and a whole lot of juice and a lot of meat. Oh, okay. Duck wrapped around a Japanese what? scallion. We'll compare that yuzu to the Cantonese uh, garden chong. I added flavor or like a kick to it. This is chicken roast. This is the inner muscle of the chicken thigh. These are parts of the chicken I've never had before. It still tastes like chicken, but just really, yeah, really I eat good. I don't want yuzu, bro. Karai. Karai. Mine developed a little bucket of juice on the inside. You know, that's when chicken's the best, when it's rolled up because then the juices can kind of like circle around each other. Very lightly battered. So this is Miyazaki beef. It's uh, a five rating, so it's the most marbling that you can get. Wagyu is the general term, meaning Japanese beef. Kobe is a place in Japan. This one happens to be from Miyazaki, right? So this is Miyazaki beef. There is an annual contest of who has the best beef. Miyazaki has won like several years in a row. Is it a myth that they actually um, have you massage them and give them beer? Yeah, the whole point is to keep them pretty sedentary so that they get really fat and lazy and drunk. So the Miyazaki beef is gonna be really fatty, it's gonna be really rich. On top is some uni. The uni is from Chile, which is seasonal right now. Cheers, Cheers. before it falls apart. Melts in your mouth, right? It's like creamy and buttery at the same time. That was amazing. The A5 melted like it was Toro. And the uni on top gave it like a creamy, buttery texture. It was like a stick of butter on a piece of fat. This is our food. Hokkaido <gasps> oh. scallop. On top is some uni, the same one from Chile. Underneath, some loki and shimeji mushrooms. It's sitting on a plate of salt. It's on salt, that's just to balance of shell. Oh my god. Go for gosh. it, go David, for it. Go David, grab the other scallop. Making my parents proud. <laughs> <laughs> Being a yappy. Oh my gosh, look at the anokis just dripping here. Anoki is actually one of my favorite mushrooms of them all. I'm not gonna lie, no, I could not tell 
if the uni was from Chile or Hokkaido. Hokkaido's uni is more orange in color, and they're a little bit more creamy. Chile and U.S. sushi is a little bit lighter and yellow and sweeter. So these are the carbonara spawns. Grab it with two hands, rip the head off, and suck the juice out of the head. Oh! Ah! When you said this shrimp was super juicy, man, you were not you kidding. Can. Rip it up, rip it up! Yes, yeah, cheers, cheers, cheers on that. Cheers, let's drink the heads. Wow. Yeah, that was almost like a shaolong bao. Like, oh yeah. Like a soup dumpling almost just exploded. Mm. I get some of that extra flavor. I like to just crunch the head and just bite it. That was crazy good. That's cool. Yeah, some amazing shrimp. It almost tastes like it's dipped in the, the best part of the, the crab brain. And just Very the juices sweet. were so thick and rich. You could see how dark the juice was. This is fun, man. This is our view concept. This is a panko crusted deep fried filet. That's washi, washi beef. It's actually an American cow, uh, Japanese cow raised in America. It's aesthetically pleasing how they plated it because it has a center. It sort of radiates out, and then you have the little condiments in the side. It's hard to describe something because you've had um, katsu so often, but to have it with that rare cut of beef and that quality, actually with the dipping, sauces, I felt like it was a whole new experience. I like it because the katsu crust was not too thick and crunchy. Sometimes you get a pork katsu, chicken katsu, and it's just all crunch. Look at that crisp, it's breaking up on top. That's how lightly fried it is. Jen, please put the yam and ume in there. Don't hold back. Doctor! That means wear, eye doctor. Do you wear glasses? David has amazing vision. I think David still has better vision than me, and I got eye surgery. Not perfect though. 2019. Is that 20? What, what's, the one, what's the one? What's the one? Yo, she. 2015. Oh, she 20. told you there's no such thing. Hey, we're going into 2019. You see in the future, David. Inaniwa udon. Thin cut udon. You know those Chinese oyster soup? Oh, mm -hmm. Kind of like that. Andrew, you know me. I've always been a big proponent of shisho, mm -hmm. and there are cut up shisho leaves. In this udon. That was one of the main flavors I had, is the shoyu and shisho, and then the fish Yo, roll. That is a perfect dish to end on. Yo, let's clap it up. <laughs> that is interesting because who you come with actually changes the flavor and the texture and the feel of the food. Yeah. So having fried chicken, um, the way you described it is different from having fried chicken at a different place. It just feels more like an environment where you have fresh seafood and then you could have fried food at the same time. In the comments section below, make sure you let us know, number one, what you thought was the most interesting dish out of the nine that we tried today. And number two, what are some other food experiences that we need to try? There's just so much depth to the culinary world and the more I get into it, the less I realize I actually know in comparison to the whole scope of things. Definitely check out Shiraku here in the West Village. Shout out to Chef Joe, all the other chefs, Dr. Jen and Juice. And until next time, we out. Peace. So guys, if you guys want to check me out on Instagram, my handle is uh, dr. Dr. And if they want an eye exam, if they want an eye exam, should they call your office? You should message them and see if you can get an appointment with me. <laughs> wow! Do not okay. message the Fung Bros if you want an eye exam from her. She probably has an office somewhere or a number to call. And until next time, we out. Peace. <laughs>